Hi, doctor. Uh, you're Dr. Dobbs, correct? I am. Yes, sir, Mr. Yes, Fendon. Yes, so. and uh, I have a client that I want to refer to you that fell off a ladder while on the job. Okay. And he's got pain in both the neck and the low back, the cervical and low back. Okay. With radiating pain down both arms and down both legs. Sure. Okay. I want to send them to you. Uh, what will you do to treat them? Well, you know, usually we do see a lot of these types of cases here at the pain center. Um, and I'll usually see most of them within, you know, a week or two. It's important that we get these patients in as soon as possible um, to perform, you know, initially a comprehensive physical examination. Uh, sometimes we will refer them off for advanced imaging, such as x-ray imaging, you know, CT scans or MRI type imaging, and then see that patient back a week or two after having that performed and talk to them about different treatment options for their pain symptoms. Um, usually when I'm seeing a patient with, you know, cervical spine pain, pain in the neck area, or lumbar spine pain, pain in the lower back, I'm talking to them about four basic treatment options. Um, typically, sometimes medications will be helpful, uh, at least initially in terms of managing their pain symptoms. Uh, sometimes a course or round of physical therapy or aquatic therapy uh, may be helpful in regards to minimizing their pain symptoms. Um, sometimes I'll think about, you know, setting them up for some different types of injections like epidural injections or different types of nerve blocks, which sometimes can be helpful. Um, and then the last option, you know, sometimes we do see patients with pretty substantial changes on their MRI. In those patients, I may think about getting a surgeon involved initially uh, just to see them and evaluate them and potentially consider them a candidate for surgery as well. Beside the epidural blocks, do you do median branch blocks as well? We do all sorts of different interventions and injections in and around the spine. Um, certainly epidural injections are one of the mainstays of treatment. Um, but certainly medial branch blocks um, can be very helpful in regards to managing pain symptoms too. Sometimes we do medial branch blocks as a pre prelude to another type of procedure called radiofrequency ablation, where we actually burn some of the nerves in and around the spine. That can be helpful with pain both in the neck area and also in the lower back area as well. Um, there's other injections in the sacroiliac area, sometimes it can be helpful and sometimes trigger point injections or other types of procedures to help with muscle or myofascial type pain as well. And the radial frequency ablations, are they done at more or less at the end of the treatment that you provide or are they done uh, in the middle or beginning or what? It really depends on the patient. Um, typically, most patients that we're seeing, for example, with cervical spine pain, pain in the neck or pain in the lower lumbar spine, um, if they've tried some different medications and tried a course of physical therapy and they still have pain symptoms, then you know, certainly something like a medial branch block as a prelude to radiofrequency ablation can be really helpful. So oftentimes, if we're able to see that patient within a few weeks of their injury, this is something that we're doing to try to get them feeling better, get them back to work, get them back doing things. And certainly our focus is really to improve their level of function and quality of life and you know, try to keep medications to a minimum if at all possible. So it's really a continuum of care in terms of when we're seeing somebody and evaluating them and discussing with them various types of injections or other procedures. Sometimes that'll be done initially you know, within a month or two of their injury. Um, sometimes it might be six months down the road depending on how they're responding to other conservative treatment. And you've indicated that it's important from your standpoint to see them as soon after the accident as possible? As soon as possible, absolutely. So with most of our interventional pain management procedures, um, various studies have come out showing if we're able to get them in and be seen within the first three to six months after an injury, that's oftentimes when most of our injections can really be the most effective for them um, in terms of reducing their pain symptoms and substantially improving their ability to function and quality of life. So. And the injections, epidural steroid injections, or the ESIs and the radial frequency ablations, mm -hmm. the RFA, so to speak, are part of the conservative care you render? Absolutely. So most patients that we see, for example, you know, with sciatica, you know, pain that goes from the lower back down into the leg or foot, don't need surgery. Most patients do respond really well to conservative treatment. So the medications I mentioned, physical therapy, 
and certainly something like an epidural steroid injection placed in and around the spine. I do have a model, which I can point out here in terms of the area that we're focused on. Um, this is a model of the lumbar spine. And just to orient our patients here, um, these are the lower lumbar vertebrae right here. And in between there, you have these discs that sort of act as shock absorbers. This yellow thing that's coming down is your spinal cord, and then you have various nerve roots that come out from the spinal cord, and they go down to the back buttock, hips, and legs. This bony prominence here is the spinous process. That's the bony area that you feel when you push on your back. So, for example, a patient that you described initially in our conversation, somebody who would fall off a ladder potentially could have a disc protrusion or herniation. So that would be something like a disc pushing back like that, potentially impinging or pushing on the nerve roots as they pass by. So when I would see a patient like that, I would, of course, perform a, a history, perform a physical examination on them. And if they were to have radiating or what we call radicular pain that goes from the back into the leg, you know, something like an epidural steroid injection might be very helpful in regards to minimizing their symptoms. So we use an x-ray machine here at the pain center to help facilitate that. And we place the needle kind of right in and around this area, right in and around the epidural space or where the nerve root comes out um, from the spine and bathe that area in a cortisone type medication. And like I said, that should help decrease pain and inflammation in that area and hopefully um, decrease their pain symptoms. Um, Go ahead. Would that yeah. be true with a cervical injury as well? It would, absolutely. For the most part, the anatomy is relatively similar in the cervical spine as compared to the lumbar spine. Um, and like I said, we use fluoroscopy, you know, live x-ray image to kind of guide us into that area. Usually using fluoroscopy makes everything much easier um, for me and certainly for the patient. And in terms of patient safety, that's really the gold standard these days. And you wouldn't refer them out to a surgeon unless all these other modalities didn't work. Is that correct? Typically, um, most of the patients that we do see here in, here in the pain center, like I already mentioned, don't need to have surgery, for example, on their neck or back. Um, you know, for example, for a disc herniation in the neck or a disc herniation in the lower back. Most patients do respond well to conservative treatment. But if I do have a patient um, and I'm examining them and I see you know, really substantial signs of a nerve injury or nerve impingement. Um, sometimes I'll have them see a surgeon early on in the continuum of care. And especially if, you know, I'm seeing physical exam findings and also corresponding MRI findings that point me in the direction of directing that patient to a surgeon, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to ask our surgical colleagues for an evaluation. And I take it you try to get an MRI as soon as possible? I try, um, sometimes with limited success, but I usually do try, especially if they meet certain criteria on physical exam. For example, if I see somebody with you know, sciatica, pain that radiates from the lower back down into the leg, typically they would have numbness and tingling that would correspond to an appropriate nerve root. Oftentimes they'd have a positive straight leg raise test or I raise the leg up off the bed and if that exacerbates their pain symptoms, and that's considered a positive or corresponding sign. Um, so that would certainly be a patient that I think about an MRI early in the continuum of care. It sounds to me like treatment by you would be beneficial as opposed to maybe going to a surgeon and that surgeon recommending surgery right away. I would think so. You know, like I said, most patients don't need surgery um, for most problems in and around the spine. Certainly, I wouldn't hesitate to refer a patient to see a surgeon if I felt in my medical opinion that they did need a surgical evaluation. Um, but as previously stated, most patients don't need to have surgery on their spine. Most patients do respond favorably to conservative care. Doctor, you have a very good reputation in Phoenix, and I know you're board certified in pain management and treatment of pain. Is that Correct. That is correct, yeah. So I've been here in the Phoenix area now for going into 16 years. Um, so certainly I'm, I'm board certified in anesthesiology. That's my background and board certified, subspecialty board certified in pain management. So I've been doing a lot of these procedures here on patients in the Phoenix area for 15 to 16 years now. That's excellent. And uh, some physicians in town say they're uh, pain management doctors, but they really aren't board certified. Yeah, there are certainly a handful of, of uh, practitioners here in the pain management field that are not board certified in pain management. 
Um, some of them have been kind of grandfathered in over time, um, but some of them just are you know, certified in anesthesia, neurology, physical medicine, rehabilitation, that sort of thing. Well, I thank you for this time to talk with you, and I would definitely refer patients to you because you would do supportive, I mean, uh, supportive care, so to speak, and I don't mean after they were stationary, but while they need active care rather than sending them to a surgeon. Absolutely, yeah, so we're here to certainly help those injured workers. You know, if they are injured on the job, it's important that we see them early in the continuum of care just to try to get them back on their feet, maintain their ability to function, and certainly improve their quality of life. And from my experience, I know most of my clients would rather not have surgery and would rather be treated util utilizing conservative modalities like that, you do. That's true, yeah. So certainly, you know, surgery tends to make some people nervous. And like I said, most patients don't need surgery. Um, so we're here and we're available. Um, and I'm happy to see those patients if they need to see me. Very good. It's a <laughs> pleasure. You. It's a pleasure meeting you in person. Oh, yeah. Know?